In the lush, fertile crescent between the mighty Tigris and Euphrates rivers, the majestic city of Uruk stood as a beacon of civilization, governed by a king whose saga would become the cornerstone of epic poetry. His name was Gilgamesh, born of divine and mortal blood, a being of immense strength and complexity, destined to explore the profoundest depths of the human condition. Gilgamesh, revered and feared, was no ordinary ruler. His divine heritage granted him powers beyond those of his subjects, but it also imbued him with a pride and veracity that knew no bounds. His early reign was marked by grand projects and military conquests, yet his unchecked arrogance and tyrannical behaviors weighed heavily upon his people. The gods, moved by the plight of Uruk's citizens, decided to intervene by creating Enkidu, a wild man of equal strength and vigor, born from the harmony of nature and fashioned by divine hands from water and clay. Enkidu was initially a primal force, living among animals and untouched by human civilization, until he encountered Gilgamesh. Their first meeting was as fierce as it was fateful, with a battle that shook the very walls of Uruk. This confrontation, however, blossomed into an unbreakable friendship, one that redefined Gilgamesh's character and redirected his path from tyranny to a quest for glory that would benefit his people. Together, the king and his newfound companion embarked on adventures that echoed through eternity. They ventured into the dense cedar forest, where they challenged and defeated Humbaba, the monstrous guardian set by the gods to protect the sacred groves. Their exploits did not go unnoticed by the divine, particularly by the goddess Ishtar, who offered Gilgamesh her affections. When he spurned her advances, Ishtar, enraged, sent the Bull of Heaven to ravage the earth. Gilgamesh and Enkidu, standing side by side, slew the beast, but this victory came at a grave cost. The gods decreed Enkidu's death as retribution for their defiance. His demise devastated Gilgamesh, plunging him into a spiritual crisis that would lead him to question the very essence of existence. His grief ignited an obsessive quest to escape the clutches of mortality. Gilgamesh's journey took him far beyond the known world, through landscapes mystic and perilous, to the very brink of the earth and beyond. He sought wisdom from Siduri, the divine barmaid who counsels him to cherish life's simple pleasures, and from Utnapishtim, the distant survivor of the Great Flood, a man who had transcended death itself. Utnapishtim, residing at the world's edge, imparted to Gilgamesh the story of the Flood, an event so cataclysmic that the gods themselves had quivered. He revealed to Gilgamesh the existence of a plant that could restore youth, a secret kept hidden from mortal knowledge. With renewed hope, Gilgamesh obtained this miraculous plant from the ocean's depths, only to have it stolen by a serpent while he bathed, symbolizing the elusive nature of eternal life. Returning to Uruk, heart-heavy yet enlightened, Gilgamesh had transformed. He had sought immortality but found wisdom, a realization that true immortality lay in the legacy he would leave in the enduring stories of his reign, and in the mighty walls of Uruk, which would outlast him as testament to his journey and transformation. Thus, the Epic of Gilgamesh endures not just as a tale of adventures and divine encounters, but as a profound exploration of man's eternal struggle with the concept of mortality. It teaches us that through our actions, relationships, and the memories we leave in the hearts of others, we achieve an immortality of our own, a legacy that echoes through ages, long beyond our earthly existence.